Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day, and yes, it's that time of the week again, that time of the day, where yours truly come to you to invite you to join me tonight for Bible study, and sometimes our invitation is an infomercial, <laughs> sometimes it's a sermon, sometimes it's this and that, and one of the reasons is that number one, we love the opportunity to speak to you. And also there are so many things that's going on in the world, my friends, that we want to uh, keep you abreast of. of and, and also our God, more importantly, our God is moving by his spirit and he's moving in all the world. And so many exciting, th there are so many exciting things that God is doing. I just saw something yesterday, my friends. We were at the legislature building here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, we were there to influence as many elected officials as we can, senators and congressmen and people who are in the positions of power, to when there is a heartbeat bill to vote for, once it is constructed and put together, we're praying that uh, uh, elected officials would vote in the state of North Carolina to move the, 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 the current ball is you can have an abortion at 20 weeks. The proposal is to move it down to 13. Praise God. We praise God for all the progress that we can get because the truth is we want it eradicated uh, in our state altogether. Uh, but uh, there is, there is an attempt to get the compromise down to the heartbeat bill, which would represent about six weeks uh, that once the heartbeat begins, that, that the, the mother can no longer have an abortion in the state of North Carolina. We'll see how it goes. And we're praying. We talked to some wonderful people yesterday. We were received royally. I thank God for the happy warriors and the saints, the members of the upper room who turned out with me to meet me down there, to talk with these lobbyists, to talk with these people, to try to get them to hear us. And many, many did. And let's pray that when the time comes, when the vote comes, that we will vote to save babies. If the heartbeat bill is made, passed into law, my friends, that would, that would mean that 26,000 babies would be saved because they would be protected by this bill. And I think that there's a good, that that's a good thing. Among the people who was resisting us, we uh, one of the saints reported to me that they were talking to someone who represents the AARP, American Association for Retired Persons. Now, it goes to show that when you ignore God, ignoring God just makes you downright stupid. I just tell you, my friends, it just makes you stupid. It makes you crazy. Why would anybody representing the, uh, the American Association for Retired Persons uh, not be for the heartbeat bill. I mean, listen, if you're representing retired persons, you need people born who can grow up and go to work so you can get your retirement money. You, 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 we, you need young people so that you can live, we, so that we can hire them to take care of us, all of us, if we live long enough, we're going to retire. Many of us already have a card from AARP. So how in the world, what kind of logic is that? That's about like the logic of uh, the, the person who was the, uh, uh, the, the chief executive officer of uh, Toys R Us. How about this? Tours of Us, Tours R Us was pro-choice. Tours of Us was pro-abortion. Now, you got to be the dumbest CEO in the history of man if your company caters to children. Toys R Us. Toys. So how in the world can you be thinking clearly if you are for the eradication of unborn babies who are the only ones who really, once they're born, you know, people buy toys for babies, for children, and you are for the slaughter of the unborn. No wonder toys of us are, 
Toys R Us, I'm struggling to even pronounce it, uh, went out of business. Yet stupid people running it. We're in a situation today where we have outsmarted ourselves. You know, uh, back in 19, 1940, for every one person getting the Social Security benefit, there was 159 Americans paying into Social Security to support that person who is getting their benefits. 159 uh, for one person, one beneficiary. Today, my friends, it's 2.8 to 2.3 persons paying in for each person who is getting a benefit. And you listen to this preacher. I don't care what these politicians tell you. You know, all of them say we're not going to touch Social Security. We're not going to touch it. We're never going to uh, do anything about uh, uh, Social Security. Social Security is in trouble. And the major reason it's in trouble is because man uh, thought he was smarter than God. There is at least 60 plus, oh my Lord, million or more human beings missing who would be alive paying into Social Security, Social Security, had we not aborted them. See, while we're trying to outsmart God, we have outsmarted ourselves. And you know what? I don't see how we're going to uh, be able to turn the tide. And uh, 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 if, you, if you know, well, we can raise the Social Security age limit. Well, I don't care if you raise it to 100. Uh, it's in trouble. So I'm saying this to say to all who are depending on it, especially if you're my age or younger, my word to you is don't. Set up your retirement, work hard, make good decisions because this thing won't be there. And the major reason that it's not going to exist by the time you need it is because we outsmarted ourselves trying to outsmart God. Blessed is that nation, the Bible says, whose God is the Lord. Blessed is a nation when people will hear God and obey God and follow uh, God's edicts and God's laws and the rules of the God of the Bible. After all, he made us. He loves us and he knows what's best for us. Countries are suffering today. China's one child policy has created major problems for that communist country. There's not enough women. It's becoming a country where all you look around and see are guys, guys, guys. Well, you need women to make babies. You need the, the male and the female. But uh, they've aborted themselves into a bad situation. Uh, this selective abortion and all these things has caused major problems. Why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because men are trying to outsmart God. And before I invite you to Bible study tonight, I want to send the word out. I was talking to a dear friend of mine yesterday at the legislature, legislature building. And I just love this preacher. He's a man of God, a preacher of color, and just a good guy. And he said to me, and this is for preachers who may see this today. He said to me, he said, Reverend, where are the preachers? I'm not hearing from preachers on this issue. Preachers are silent. Here I am. I'm an elected official. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm for the protection of the, protecting the unborn. And listen. Uh, uh, I'm not going to mention what party he's in. I'm not going to do anything like that because uh, to me, this is not a, a party issue. It's a people issue. It's people, people. We're talking about saving lives of people. But this man is saying, I'm not hearing from preachers. Now, let me tell you something, Rev. You preachers who find other things to talk about other than things that matter other than the, the, the defining issues of our time. Those of you who decide you're just going to set it out and keep your thoughts to yourself, or you pick up the, the popular talking point and, and go with, well, I believe in a woman's right to choose. You are complicit. 
and you need to let your voice be heard. We're outsmarting ourselves. We need to allow human beings to be born. I got a question for those of you. I'm talking fast. Gary, get ready to wrap, wrap this up. Um, uh, there's a story out where uh, one of the major universities, they're dropping all this woke stuff. And uh, University of North Carolina cancels woke diversity hiring. You know what they did? They woke up. They realize that you want to hire people who are the best people for the job. You know, you're not hiring just to, to, to keep up with some quota and to check a box. I don't want a doctor working on me, operating on me, and he got it just because a box was, was, was checked. My optometrist is, is the best one I know of. That's why I go to him. And my optometrist is of color. He's a brother. But I haven't stuck with him and uh, uh, been uh, 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 patronized his business over the years because he's black. Man, I can see he's doing a great job. That's why I'm doing it. And uh, I would have no trouble, no hesitancy whatsoever if he was not doing his job. There's no way I would stay there and risk my sight to someone just solely because, yeah, I want to stick with a brother. He's not going to stick with me if I go blind. <laughs> The devil is a liar. You got to wake up and people are waking up. I want the pilot to be the best pilot. I want the doctor to be the best doctor. I want the teachers to be the best teacher with, with regard with no uh, even consideration to some of these other uh, woke ideas. And so there is an awakening going on. But I have a question for the woke crowd, for the social justice crowd, and then I'm going to do what I'm on to do today. It takes me forever to get to it, and I know it. But I've asked, I've asked this question, and no one has answered this question. I even asked it in a debate, and no one, no one gave me a good answer. Does social justice and wokeism and all that it stands for and all of the new construct crowd does these things apply to the unborn do the unborn deserve social justice equality equity all of these terms that people throw out that others repeat without even knowing what they're saying. Nobody is for equity. When you look at it uh, in its truest form, no one is for equal outcomes regardless to effort that is applied. No one is for everybody living on the same level regardless to how hard they may work. That's called communism if you ask me. But for those of you who push these ideas, how can you push these ideas and then be against the, the uh, before the slaughter of the unborn? How can you be for these things and, and it not apply, it not apply to the best of us, the most honest, the most pure, the most righteous, the most godly, the cleanest Americans, the cleanest human beings are the human beings, the, the one group of human beings that have never committed a sin, that's never done anything wrong. And that is, that's the human beings who are in the womb. And we can slaughter them in the name of social justice and call that reproductive justice. Now you got to be dumb to say stuff like that, my friends. Re call that reproductive justice. So I just wanted to ask you about these things and I want to just encourage you. I, I guess I'm still uh, lingering from uh, uh, our, our uh, what happened yesterday down at the legislative building, going down there rubbing shoulders with people in the halls of power, trying to get them to, to do the right thing. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I wanted to throw these things at you to ponder them in your heart. I want to say to the younger people, hey, don't count on that social security. It's not going to be there because there's not enough people. We can't, we messed that up when we passed Roe v. Wade. There are other reasons, but the main reasons, we don't have people. We don't have human beings. Where are they? We killed them. We didn't let many of them see the light of day. 
They never saw the light of day. Millions never saw the light of day. Millions who would be paying into the system. 1973, Roe v. Wade, all right? These people would be paying into the system now had they been allowed to be born. The overwhelming majority of them would be paying into the system. But now it's 2.3 to 3.3 persons paying for each individual who gets a benefit. Think about that. What are we going to do? I'll tell you that tonight when we come for Bible study, because all is not lost. God has a plan for the believer. God has never, you know, we serve a God who never have to come up with a plan B because he knows the end from the beginning. And I've read the last page of this book, my friends, and we win. So I'm excited even when I throw out these and tell you about these things that's going on. These things do not kill my joy and they're not designed to kill yours. So I want to tell you tonight, God's going to speak to us in a mighty way. I'm out of time. I love you with the love of Jesus. And I just feel led to pray for somebody today. Father God, that person who is watching, who's going through some things, life is a challenge. And even some of the things I've talked about today has nothing to do with them. And yet there are others that say, oh my God, and their eyes are coming open to certain facts and truths. And uh, But Father, I pray for every person who's watching today. I pray your blessings upon them. I pray your hand of mercy. I pray your favor on their lives in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless yours. God take you through those who are dealing with bereavement and pain. God touch you right now and the Lord strengthen you and the Lord see you through it in the name of Jesus. God heal the sick who are watching today. Revive those who are down in their spirits. Remind them that you are God and that you are our light, you are our salvation, and you are the strength of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Join me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. I don't know why I laugh when I do that. But you guessed it. I just want you to come to church. All of this. Because, all of this. Because I, I think that church attendance, Bible study, if you can't get here in person, you're tuning in. And by the way, thank you to all the ladies who have signed up for the Tuesday night sisters. We got over 400 and the number keeps growing of women who will be joining my wife in that mighty move of God. Thank you. I'm excited. I love you. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ or on the medium where you're watching me right now. God bless.